We told on the last video tutorial about the pros and cons of Blazor WebAssembly apps. And on this one, we are going to talk about the Blazor server apps. We are going to talk about the pros and cons of building Blazor server apps. With the Blazor server hosting model, the app is executed on the server from within an ASP.NET Core app. UI updates, event handling, and JavaScript calls are handled over a Signal R connection. So, this means that the Blazor server apps have smaller downloading files and load faster. Also, because the app runs on a server, it means that your app has access to all the .NET capabilities. This also means that the WebAssembly is not required to run the app. And finally, you can store secrets on the server side, which is the preferred way of storing application secrets compared to storing them in client side. But a Blazor server app also comes with its downsides. Since the app runs in server, it means that it needs an active SignalR connection to the server, which means that you cannot work offline. You also need a server which will add up to your total cost of development, such as server maintenance, security, etc. Also, since you'll go back and forth to the server, there will be a latency, so this means that the Blazor server apps are less performant compared to the Blazor WebAssembly apps. Now, I should emphasize in here that less performant does not mean non-performant. It means that it's slower compared to the WebAssembly, but still really performant overall. Now, let us go to Visual Studio and create a Blazor server and see which are the default files that come with an empty Blazor server app. In Visual Studio, I'll use the same solution that I used on the last part. So, right click on Solution, go to Add, and then Add a new project. From here, choose the Blazor app, then Next. I'll name this app blazor.server and then click the create button. From the templates in here, I'll choose the blazor server app and click the create button one more time. Now that the app was created, let us go to the solution explorer and in here we are going to see the blazor server app. The file structure of a blazor server app is similar to a blazor web assembly with just some slight changes. So, for example, in a Blazor WebAssembly, we have the startup.cs, where we just define which is the startup component. But in a Blazor server app, I'll just pin the solution explorer in here, we have the startup.cs file, and then here we confirm the Razor pages and the server-side Blazor, which is responsible for creating a signal R connection between the server and the browser. If you scroll down in here, you will also see that inside the configure method, we have the endpoints that map fallback to page underscore host. Now, inside the server app, then inside the pages folder, you'll see the underscore host.csharp HTML file. And this file at line 34 has a reference to the blazor.server.js file. Now, the functionality of the host file in a Blazor server app is the same as the functionality of the index.html file in a web assembly. So we can see that in the host.csharp HTML file, we have a reference to the Blazor server JavaScript file, which will establish the client WebSocket connection to the server. Besides these two differences, both projects contain the exact same Razor components and these behave exactly the same. What this means is that you could create a Razor component library and use that in both Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor server project. Now, let us run the blazor.server app and see which files it downloads when it first runs. So, right click, go to status startup project, and then press the play button at the top. So we see that the app ran successfully. Let us press F12 in here and then go to the network tab and refresh the browser. We see in here that in difference from the Blazor WebAssembly apps where all the DLL files were being downloaded, in a Blazor server app, 
the blazor.server.js file is downloaded. And the other files are the static files that can be found in the root folder.